This is the quest within. Welcome to The Quest Within. My name is Theology. I am your host. Nathan is once again sitting this one out, but here in my studio, I have an awesome guest. They go by Legion. I met Legion at Ground Zero back in January. They were the photographer for the evening. Also, apparently, I met you in an elevator one time, too. Yes. Yeah. Two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how small of a world it is, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we reconnected at this year's 2D Con, them and uh, Julia Bambulia, uh, who they were with, and uh, we started talking. Uh, they came to both my mental health panels, and we started talking about, yeah, like, you know, like you're just like, I like to talk about this kind of stuff, too, and I would love to talk about Final Fantasy XIV and I was like, I love Final Fantasy, so let's do that. The thing is, though, I've never played Final Fantasy XIV, so I'm really excited for this discussion. It should be a really good one, and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get going. So one of your uh, talking points here that you sent me, which I love that you sent me all these, it's because just organization just makes me so happy. I have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's it's going to be in the middle of, of what you wrote. Um so basically, I used to play in a lot of bands, mm -hmm. right? And I was always like the person who was the most into things. When I discovered DJing, I was like, oh, wow, I can just do this by myself and control the entire business and control the creative process. I don't have to worry about anybody you know, ruining stuff for me. Uh, but you stayed in here that the, you know, the difference between an MMO and a single player RPG and how you rely on others and how that affects the storytelling. I think mm -hmm. that's fascinating. When I'm playing video games, it's sort of like when I'm DJing, I guess, because I feel in control. And if anybody fucks shit up, it's me. You know, it's not on anybody else. Right. But what would you say to somebody like me who uh, feels that way and maybe wants to get their feet wet in an MMO mm -hmm. and why Final Fantasy 14. Oh, yeah, I can definitely speak on that. Um so me personally growing up also, I was very much a single video like single player video game person as well because I have a similar <laughs> need for control and things. Um yeah. and I grew up playing WoW, World of Warcraft was my first MMO actually, so things can be said about like that community as well, but then I left it. The thing about Final Fantasy 14 is they have made it extremely single player friendly. Interesting. While still incorporating things where you do need to interact, but it makes it easier. So they do the thing because like I don't know if you know the basic kind of structure of MMOs. Like there's like a story that you follow, you change you choose your little class, you're going on little adventures. Okay. And then there's things And no, I, I don't because I've never played one to okay. be honest. Yeah. So it's like a general RPG. There's okay. just some other like uh, aspects to it sure so the so the general thing when you do an mmo is like you go in you make your character there's usually some character customization you start in an intro area and then most of the story and things are told through like cutscenes and then like dungeons and okay. like fights okay and the dungeons typically are usually like four person things oh. and then like there's bigger fights that have like eight people and then there's like big old raids that are like 24 people so but what they've done with most of the game up to this point is now they've made a lot of those dungeons you're able to play them by yourself okay with like a like an ai whatever like um computer operated mm -hmm. um npcs yes. and it switches depending on what class you are okay so and then they've also actually incorporated it very coolly in a in a story sense where like later on certain fights like you'll have characters who are with you at that moment and the story will be the ones with you okay so actually sometimes there's a there's like a plus to playing alone because you can go through slowly and you can like the the characters will say things it'll give you a little more context for what's going on yeah yeah so as someone who was like came from i had some bad experiences playing wow and like i was going into a new mmo and i was like it can be a little overwhelming at times because there's so much to do literally though it's crazy <laughs> yeah like you can take your time at the beginning to like learn and you can really like go slow there's no pressure on any of that and then so like so usually what i'll do even like now like when the newest expansion came out and i'm like I'm not a great player, but like I've done some yeah, savages. Whatever. I've done yeah. some high end stuff. <laughs> For um, sure. But I'll still go through dungeons first by myself just so I can like immerse myself in the story, actually like learn the mechanics. And then later when I go in and do like there's things called roulettes where you just go and do random dungeons with people. It mm -hmm. throws you in with randoms. Okay. Um, then at least then I'm like, I'm not making a fool of myself. <laughs> 
But generally, <laughs> people are really, really patient. That was the thing. Okay. Well, so, that's nice. Yeah. Were they not like that in the WoW community or something? <gasps> okay. No, yeah, I so. tried raiding once in WoW, and raids are like generally like end game content. It's how you get like the cool stuff. Oh. Okay. Um, there's like really good story often locked behind them, like really good gear, things like that. Yeah. Right? Okay. I've always wondered what a raid means. Okay. Yeah. Got it's it. really fun. They can be so, so cool. And mm-hmm. I've had such chaotic times. <laughs> yeah. Because <I> <laughs> like the best thing is like a day one raid where it like just drops and you have 24 people going in who don't know mechanics and people be <laughs> dying people be dying everywhere and it's really really funny yeah. and everyone just has a good time learning together mm-hmm. and that's what i really appreciate um like obviously you're gonna have people who are jerks anywhere right, right but in right. my experience i mean and i've only played the two mmos but the final fantasy 14 community tends to be really really helpful and cool. really really welcoming i've had a lot of people who just decided they were going to teach me stuff like in inside fights and things and like it really helped build my confidence in doing things and like made me um able to like i'll make the party finder to like find people i'll help lead people through this because Mm -hmm. i want to do it yeah yeah and that's like a really cool thing and i love stuff like that that's so tight to like play devil's advocate to myself um i'm always preaching that community is so important Mm -hmm. that is the thing too it's like yes playing video games for me is sort of an intimate experience that i do by myself but also like i know it's such a good way for people to connect and to uh, sort of share life with each other, right? I know that that is some people's social outlet, especially if you're a little more introverted or maybe you're a little neurodivergent, right? It might be better to play a game and connect with people online than it is getting overwhelmed in person by people, right? So what are some cool ways that you have sort of built community in Final Fantasy XIV? Um, you know, you can talk about whatever. Like, I do eventually want to know if you've met anybody in real life from Final Fantasy XIV, um, because I know that that's a very common thing in other MMOs. Um, I personally, well, I guess, no, I guess I would say I have. It was like at a meetup though. Yeah, okay. It was a thing. Like, you know, like, yeah, you find people. So Mm -hmm. like I'm on um, like the Twitter community and I'm on the Instagram community as well because a big um, aspect that I got into um, was like screenshot taking and like video making and like edits and things like that. Yeah. That's where I found a lot of my community. And then also just in like story writing um, and like the art community is huge and so there's so much like around people's individual characters because you make your little character and I made mine and I was like not attached to them at all I was like yep this is just a cool little dragon person here Mm -hmm. we go and then like as you go through the story you get really really connected and how the game plays out there's a lot of ways for you to kind of write your own story based around the canon okay so there's lots of people who've taken and done like so many crazy things with their characters both in their character designs and like their stories and there's a huge thing about like sharing those with each other yeah and it's a common like it's just like a a a meeting point right because it gives you an automatic thing to talk about one of the one of the more fun things that I was able to do, I didn't they have um this thing called Fan Fest every like couple of years. Okay. And there's one like in Japan, there's one in North America and elsewhere. And it's like an in person it's like a con, a short con, but yeah. just for Final Fantasy XIV. Cool. But it's like the developers are there, the composers are there. That's so um and so I didn't get to go to the fan fest, but they had a separate concert which actually to me was more important because yeah. the music is like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. everything to me yes this- and we will get to that yeah <laughs> i, could tell, oh, I that, can't wait oh masayoshi soaking uh, yeah. i'm coming for you um he is one of the best people in the world um but um there was a concert beforehand so that was in vegas and i was like well i can't go to the fan fest but i want to go to the concert because i want to be able to see like the producer in person i want to see um soaking in person um the singer who sings my favorite song ever was there and I got to hear him sing it live so I was like wow sobbing it was fine but beforehand a bunch of people over the internet organized like oh if you're going to fan fest like let's do like a sticker trade yeah so it was a thing where everyone made a bunch of stickers of their characters and we all met outside in the hotel beforehand so and so much. you just have this huge group of people everyone's going like you yeah. have stickers you have stickers and everyone's like looking at their characters and going like oh your character's so cool and like trading and doing all this stuff and like there's just so much like support for everyone's unique character love that like there doesn't seem to be i mean i'm sure there's it doesn't seem very like competitive in that sense right because yeah, everyone's yeah. character is their own right right and you do what you want with your own character and but everyone's so supportive of that and that mm-hmm. is super cool and it was really fun to just talk to people talk to a bunch of people that i'd like seen on the internet but like now seeing them in person and getting to like put faces to their characters was yeah, really cool. That's so um cool. and everyone was so nice and everyone was really supportive of me and I was like, Ugh. 
And then we all cried at the music yes. together. And it was just, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just cool when you're all there for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you're all and you're all so passionate about it. Yeah, Because totally. like to go out for just Final Fantasy 14, like it wasn't a con. It was just for Final That's Fantasy 14. That's so cool. I love how niche that is. Yes. One thing you said earlier really struck me in that you sort of, you know, you pick your character and then as the game goes on, you sort of develop your own story. Mm -hmm. Right. That strikes me as interesting because I feel like most games aren't like that. You're sort of just given like the story in general. General, and it's whatever the developers like put in that you get yeah. right you don't really have a choice in the matter mm -hmm. um and i think that's really cool that could be a really cool metaphor for like purpose in life honestly there's a lot of people who get i don't know sort of depressed about feeling like they don't have a purpose and one thing that i'm always i guess preaching <laughs> if you want to use that word is uh that you create your own purpose right it isn't because the developers you know up there or whatever made a story for you and you have to follow it like right. you get to pick your own path and i think that's really dope how Final Fantasy 14 is sort of conducive to that. God, I need to play this you now. You do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've seen a lot of people deal with like their own in real life issues mm -hmm. through their characters and like through the story. It's helped me a ton. Okay, you the have to elaborate, please. <laughs> Without <laughs> like, spoil like spoiling too much. Um, I, I just mean, it, it's a. I mean, okay, it's been out for a while. It's inevitably gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna try not Don't to talk too much spoilers. about the latest expansion, sure, even yeah. though, like, but later on, <laughs> okay, because when we good. talk about loss, I just yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, um, <laughs> it's too perfect for it. Um, but like in terms of just like resilience, and in terms of like finding your own way, and in terms of like people coming and going into your life, um, and overcoming, you know impossible odds as any rpg does right yeah. and like i feel like a lot of final fantasies do this it tends to be uh a common theme and i think of like kingdom hearts of like fighting with friendship um but like there's a point in the game where like you are literally fighting the embodiment of despair okay and i won't say more than that too much more um <laughs> holy crap we're like that's literally what's happening and you have lost like everything at that point and you have to just use your will to like fight through and there's like a very obvious point where like you could give up but like you have to keep going and it's like and just in terms of gameplay I could talk Damn. about like the the game design as yeah. well of that whole section because it's one of the most ingenious things I've ever seen and the way that it like f like physically and <laughs> mentally like destroyed people um but in it but it all brought it back around to like hope was the answer all Love along that. and yeah. that is how you got through and that is like just so translatable, I think, to real life. And I think 100%. about it all the time. Yeah. I have in my pocket. Yeah, I do. I have a rock oh. that I carry around with me that's from the game. Um, that's so And I dope. use it as like a little in real life reminder to be like, you know, it's a soul stone. There's these characters that their memories are in these stones. Okay. Um, and so that's my favorite. I really dig that. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's, really so there's a lot that. of stuff you can take out of it and a lot of messages you can take out of it into the real life. And yeah. um, I've used it. My friends have have that I know, like in person, who have played this game. Um, and I talk about it all the time. And I try to get wow. everyone to play it because without spoiling it too much, you know. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Because I do think it's something you need to experience um, on your own. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a very personal journey in terms of like, because like there is the thing of like, you know, you play with people and you mm -hmm. fight with people. But yes. like there are some moments that are like just for you. Yeah. Um, which I appreciate as well, because I'm the same way where I get really locked into a game and I'm so story driven. And some people who play this same. game yeah. aren't story driven, but I don't know how you can't be in a game with a story that's good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah. um, some people don't, but, which is fine. But I'm very much like, I want to know every story. I do all the side quests. I want all the lore as possible. I've read yeah, the yeah. lore books like many many times over um because i just love wow. the universe so much and i think it tells it has a lot of good things to say that's amazing holy crap like yeah yeah uh time is yeah i know my friend don literally i should i know my friend don he goes by euphoric nation uh -huh. he's done several final fantasy 14 raves yeah. and i'm like oh i want to do that <laughs> like, like i see so them in cool. the because i've been to a couple of the, like i'm not super into like the club scene in yeah. game but i know about it and i did go to a couple though and it was like really fun and people would just be djing on twitch and they had a link to it but you're in the little you're in the little house and they That's decorated so cool. it and like yeah. it's so fun it's just like a silly fun thing yeah like, it's better like... than meta or... right yeah yeah totally <laughs> and i 
I feel like what I do in general would. Well, yeah, because like they were just playing regular EDM, but you yeah. could literally do like the, the the Venn diagram is very you know it's a circle essentially. Yeah. People who would like video game remixes. Exactly. Maybe that's where uh, I find more of my cult audience. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I Honestly. guess we'll find out someday. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. I mean, after I'm done with Persona Five. Oh yeah. And oh, I never finished Persona. Yeah, I'm like halfway through it. It's really good. It's so good. It's so good. When you were telling uh, me about, you know, you fight the embodiment of despair. Mm -hmm. Did you cry during that or after it was done? Because there were boss fights in Persona 5 that like oh, I felt what the characters were feeling and I was a weeping whole map fighting. Of the game, that whole last map. Yeah. I was a sobbing wreck through the entire thing. I had friends who had to stop playing for a moment yeah, because they were like, I can't keep going because I know what's going to happen and I can't do it. And then my partner was playing it because I played through it first. Yeah. And they saw me and they were like, are you okay? And I was like, no. Um, <laughs> and then my partner played it and like he got angry because he was, yeah. it was, it was, it makes you go through grief essentially. Sure, sure. Um, in a very effective way and in a very beautiful way. Um, I, I cry so much at this game, though. I, I'm a amazing. crier, though. Like, I'm very easily affected. But, like, see, a big thing about that section, too, is specifically the music and what they do with it is, like, really, really heart-wrenching. Because the thing with this um, this composer, I would say, like, he's a fantastic composer, but he's an even better arranger. Okay. So the way that he's able to take themes and twist them around and change them so that, like, you almost don't... Like, I know people who weren't as... Because I went to music school, so... Yeah, I was where, where again? Remind me. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Minnesota uh, meta, meta you know, shit. It was yeah. good. I met my partner yeah. there. Worth it. Um, uh, fine. Excellent. But um, <laughs> met, met a lot of nice people. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing is so, so like I, I pick up on that stuff really quickly. I'm like, oh, that theme is from here and that theme is from here. Oh, they're playing the theme from this expansion because this is happening. And like I pick up on all of that and I love that because yeah. it's so ingenious to me. Totally. But the fact that he's able to do it, I talked with my friends who um, weren't as like they aren't as musically inclined, but they still felt it. Like when I told them what was happening and then they were like, oh, my gosh, they're like, I didn't notice that, but I did feel it now that you say that. And I'm like, so his ability to do this, like build up of themes so that when it all like culminates in this big, like grandiose thing, it hits you like a freight train. Yeah. And it was just. I love that. I'm actually going through uh, for the final I guess, chapter in the book that I'm writing about video games and mental health. Um, But I'm going to still make videos about that beyond this. I might publish a second volume. Who knows? But uh, the last chapter uh, and or my 12th video in this series, I'm going through Julian Grasso's uh, PhD dissertation about video game music, actually. really? And we're about to touch on exactly what you were saying. Yeah. How, I mean, I I sort of read through the the second chapter, which is where this information is found, um, about how different kinds of themes will bring up certain kinds of feelings, and they're so crucial to a good video game, right? Um, So that makes me want to play Final Fantasy XIV even more now. (laughs) Yeah. And, and like, a lot of it's, like... um rearrangements of like Nobuo Uematsu did like the first expansions music like the original music they brought Soken in later but he takes so many themes that Nobuo did and and translates them so well but then also has made his own stand and he did 16 he did Final Fantasy 16's music as well so sweet yeah 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 got it and there are a couple tunes from 16 that I want to remix because yeah I just beat 16 yeah like a month ago it was good yeah what I okay so 16 to me personally Mm -hmm. was a little bit boring at first and then there's this point where the story just gets really fucking good and you're like oh I like this game now you know um but uh, yeah, you gotta get through I'm until okay with the slow till that part. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then it's just really good. It's yeah. a, one of the best combat systems in any game that I've ever played. Really? Okay. Yes, it's it's so much fun. But in that, we're talking about Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, there was another thing you mentioned, and it was uh, that grief isn't linear. I really want to talk about that. Um, in my mental health panel at two D Con, I talked about my friend Owen, who I lost, mm-hmm. and yeah, I was wondering if uh, you know you've ever lost anyone like that and if this game helped you in in your grieving process i mean it you could definitely say no to that and just elaborate more on the characters but um so i'm actually like i'm I'm kind of in the weird thing where i haven't lost anyone that close to me sure um 
so it seems odd to be like I could talk about grief because I know I can't relate to it on a certain level with other yeah. people. Um, but I, I did want to actually I was going to ask this at your panel, but then people kind of ask questions that kind of answered it. it. Was, so I was like, oh, there was a lot. Yeah, there's, a lot. <laughs> there's so much you can talk about it. You know, yeah, literally. Um, but I have I've been diagnosed with like severe, severe um, anxiety. Okay. And a lot of that anxiety is around death and is around like I constantly think about dying, about how I'm going to die, about yeah. how I could possibly die. Yep. And like, it's, it's been, I'm really, I'm at a really good point right now, but it's been very detrimental. Um, and so there's certain ways that like media, I feel really, really helps deal with that. Like you talked about in your panel, like that game about the, um, is that where they, a mortician? Yeah, the mortician's tale. Yeah. Like, dealing with themes like that. Because, like, it's kind of like how, like, people say, oh, you watch horror movies because it helps you process things in a safe space, right? So, for me, a lot of that is video games. And that's why I usually yeah. only play games that, like, emotionally destroy me or yeah. deal with really heavy <laughs> themes. Um, because it kind of helps me get through that part of it. Um, because, for me, so in Final Fantasy fourteen, common thing is, like, in the lore of the game, is that when you die you everything's part of like the life stream right like i think they have to have that in final fantasies all over the place right Got and it. so like your soul goes yeah. back into the life stream and yep. like and goes back in it's not like reincarnation necessarily but like you're still there but you're just like in the earth in the whatever right yeah and like people but then but then you find out at some point that like oh but like the ethereal sea as they call it is a physical place that you can get to so there are points where like people get really close to that and then the fact that like you lose several people throughout the game. I won't go into too much detail, but All you good. lose several people throughout the game. Are we talking they're... like Aerith level loss or like... <laughs> some of them, yeah. Some of them people are still like so to this day, so, so, so upset about them. Wow. Um, and I think about them to this day and they keep bringing them back up. And I'm like, can you stop doing this? Because it makes me cry every time. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they're so good at writing characters that are so real and so likable and so just like, just they're just really good characters. Got it. And so if you lose one of those or, they're yeah. just, or just the fact that like with an MMO, it's so long. It's like a 10 years at this point plus of story. So you've been with some of these characters for a very long time. So when you lose them, it hurts, yeah, it hurts. more right. to me. Um, more than like a character in a movie or and you know what I mean? Because like totally. just like just on in video games in general, I'm like they're yeah. longer. So right. they, you have more time. Yeah, to movie process. is two hours. Exactly. Like, like yeah. no, we got eight plus hours in a game. Right. For me, I've got hundreds of hours in this one. Yep, yep. But then the fact that like you lose someone and they never they always bring it back up. Like, there's, like, a character from, like, the second expansion who, in the most recent expansion, you're still, like, reminded of him. The words he says to you are mm -hmm. still, like, things that echo in your head to, like, remind you to keep going. And so there's... there's To me, it's comforting in the sense of grief of, like... Because my biggest thing, too, is, like, no one wants to be forgotten. No one wants to be, like, left behind. Totally. That's, like, a really scary thing. And people are always so concerned with, like, legacy and what they're leaving, what mark they're leaving on the mm -hmm. world. And I think that this game has a really good way of showing you that the people who love you and that, like, you, you live on in the people who go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You totally. know, like, like, there's, like, a line, and if I say it on my... I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But there's a song this. at the end, you. and it's yeah. got all these words, and it's, like, the most beautiful song. I'm obsessed with it. It's my favorite song. But there's, like, a line in it literally where it says, like, through you we live. Mm. And it's from, like, the perspective of all those you've lost. And you, as this, like, warrior of light, you've been this, like, big character that's, like, gone through so much and always pulled through. And, yeah. like, you're carrying all of the people you've lost. Mm. And, like, wondering, like, why me? Like, why am I still here? And, like, that kind of feeling... But it helps me kind of process that in terms of, like, it's going to be okay, you know? Yeah. Like, you'll still be around in some form or another. Right. And just because your dad doesn't mean that you're gone. Yeah, yeah. And that helps me a lot. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm of... sure it will help me when I do inevitably lose someone close to me because yeah. I know it will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, eventually that's how life is, right? Like, <laughs> you can't avoid it. It's the only thing that's inevitable. Yeah. When, when Owen died, um, we... Uh, his wife Sue talked a lot about like keep bringing him up, keep telling stories because right. that is how you honor somebody's legacy is by you just keep speaking. You don't want to just stop, yeah. Because my 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 family has never been very good about talking. Got about it. Things, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about like any like mental health issues, any anything heavy. They've just been like it's just a cap on it. We don't talk about it, mm -hmm. and obviously that affected me growing up. And so now this is part of the reason why I am so adamant about talking about it. 
Because Welcome I'm like, you have to. I know you, yeah. you just, you have to. Because why pretend that there's no point? Um, and so, like, because I recently, um, my grandma did die this past okay. summer. Got it. And I was, we weren't super close at the yeah, end. Yeah, like, yeah. she didn't really know me. So sure. it was this thing of, like, I was like, I'm going to this funeral, but I don't really, I don't feel very sad. Which was, like, a thing that I talked to, um forget her name the therapist you had or uh that. deeds yes yeah um, vector use wife yeah, yeah, yeah. i <laughs> talked to her briefly after your panel even and it was really nice because when she said that thing about like it's okay if you don't feel sad yeah these are normal feelings to have and mm-hmm. like that was really good for me to hear um because like i just and no one would talk about it the whole time we were there and i was like and no one would even talk about her we're at her funeral no one was talking about her and it was very strange yeah, you know and i just was like odd. this seems so insincere and this seems so it just felt very odd to me and so i just really want to i just want to be genuine i don't know yeah <laughs> so yeah, that the no. people who do who when i die do talk about me are talking about me from like a place of genuine love and not just like you know exactly <laughs> it's complicated yeah i i've been to funerals that are that way as well and they are very awkward but then yeah i've been to ones where you know it it was a genuine person and everyone is talking about memories and mm-hmm. like yeah. the term celebration of life. Like I yeah. feel is a good, you know, one that's feels what it much better be. than the other. Yeah. Exactly. It's what it should be. So moving uh, down, I guess the, the line mm-hmm. um, when, you know, like, okay, if you can think about a character that was lost like a while ago, I don't know. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. Cause I feel like, you know, they, yes. they don't, they didn't all just die at the same time. No. Right. No, no, no. Like, I don't know. When did the first one die? Was it like three years in of story out of 10? Oh gosh, or like... when did that one come out? Probably just like a couple okay. years. It was second expansion. Got it. And do they still talk about that character yeah. to this day? That's what's up. Yes. Yeah, yes. I love that. And That's a great like... example from a video game. Exactly. Motherfuckers. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, keep talking about them. The lessons people have taught you will stay with you. You know, and don't shut up about them because that's the only way they stay alive. There's a really cool thing. I don't think this is super spoilery um, because it's just like kind of an aspect of the thing. There's a people in the there's a group of people in the newest expansion who I have like, oh, my gosh, I just I love thinking of it this way. And it's probably taken from some culture or something, I, I assume. But there's like a group of people and they live in the mountains and their whole thing is that they make living gravestones. Interesting. So you make your own gravestone before you're dead and you can write your whole legacy on it while you're alive so they're like oh, thinking yeah. about and talking about death the whole time so that way it's not scary when mm-hmm. it happens because yeah. they're like well i'm already ready like here's my legacy people will know who i was and they still like they tend all the graves and it's like death is such a big part of their culture yeah both to the living and the dead and so that was really cool to me and i really liked that like making it more yeah. of an everyday thing that you think about because it is inevitable right why isn't that more common? I know. I thought it was very cool. Yeah. And I was like, I really, really love that concept. And it, it helped me think about death in a less scary way. Right. So, I don't know. I think we should. People are very scared of it. And I get it, because it is scary. It is scary. But the more you talk about it, the more it destigmatizes it, right? Um, that was part of what I shared in my my death video, is that uh, that Caitlin Doty person, who I spoke about briefly, and who like we think the main character in a mortician's tale is based off of because mm. it looks a lot like her in real mm-hmm. life. Anyways, <laughs> she's part of the death positivity movement, which isn't a movement to fetishize death, no, but it's... it is to just talk about it yeah. so that it's not as scary when it happens. Right. And I think that's very important. Any taboo subject like that, mm-hmm. the more you talk about it, the more it strips it of its power. Um, I made the analogy as well with uh, the cold mm-hmm. and how I always hated it. Mm-hmm. And then one day my brother just said, be, be cold. cold. <laughs> and then I did. And now it's like, oh, whatever. You know, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I can handle Minnesota. This ain't nothing. So, um, yeah, I think that's very, very, very important and should definitely be reiterated. I wanted to ask, uh, so one of your talking points was the downfall of wanting perfection Mm -hmm. and the extreme measures people will go in order to stay in the same place. I... (laughs) <laughs> uh, in one of my recent videos, I actually talked about this and how, like, why why are people against change when it is progressive? If it's regressive, I get that, right? I, I don't want things to change and go backwards because that's not any fun. <laughs> cough, Robbie Wade, cough. Um, <laughs> but, but, like, if it's moving you forward, like, why would you not embrace it? I don't know. What are... What are some examples from the game that revolve around this theme? Mm-hmm. Okay. So 
this will be spoilery just yeah letting you know um so essentially th- that's kind of the not the main thing but it's a huge huge part of the entire overarching storyline so the whole thing is that so there's like six expansions now so the first five though were one giant arc that they ended right so this newest one is like starting a new story so the last one that came out was like a big end to a 10 year long story so it tied a bunch of stuff up that had been building up from the very very beginning so you learn throughout the game the game starts off very simple like you're like you're fighting monsters you're doing the thing like oh big bad monster go kill the monster oh there's these bad guys over here we gotta stop them we don't know what they're doing they're shadowy and weird You find out over the course of the game that your entire world has been split and you are one of the pieces. So there was a world that existed before and something happened that caused that world to split into 14 shards, hence 14. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Nice. But and so throughout the game, you learn more about this world and then you find out essentially i feel like final fantasy is really good at like you kill a bad guy and then you immediately feel really bad about it because then you learn why they were doing what they were doing right yeah so you find out that a lot of these bad guys that you were and they did terrible things so they're still bad guys but like you find out that what they were trying to do they were from that original world and they were trying to put their world back together got it so then you go oh because that in itself is not a bad thing. They were just trying to recreate what they lost, mm-hmm. but they were doing it through very, very extreme measures yeah. through destroying all these other worlds that existed. Right. And there was this one person in that group who was against that because they were like, it's our own fault that these things happen. Like, it's like, we can't change that. We can't go back. And now there's all this new life here. We have no right to take that just because it used to be, you know. And so there was this big fight between them that resulted in all of this happening. And so you find out that your entire world is literally just a piece of this giant story that's been happening. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) and so it's you trying to fight for your right to live while also maybe understanding why they're doing what they're doing, but also you need to stop them or else you're going to die. And so it's like a matter of like which life is more worth it, you know. Morality is not black and white. No, it's whatsoever. very, very like. Yeah. There's this character who straight up says like at one point where he goes, he's like, "You're like ants to me, so why should I care if I kill you?" Because he's like, "You're not whole. You're not whole people," and like you can take that and be like, "That can apply to a lot of things." Yeah. It's like, are we gonna think about Good it that Lord. way? Like this is just life that's living, and so you're like, "Yes, I feel bad for you, and I wish that you could have what you had, but also, like at what cost?" You know. Oh, I'm so curious now. Mm-hmm. Do, does that people group stay like barbaric the whole time? Do they have a change of heart or <laughs> It's the kind of thing, yeah. We're so they've you you catch them and you meet them at there's different ones, right? So so different of them of the group yeah. handle things differently, right? Yep, yep. Um and they have different motivations for the specific way they're doing things. Got it, got it. Um and so as you go through some of them you change their minds, some of them you don't, you know. And as you as you learn more about each of them, it, it's easier with with different ones, right? Because the one was like you find out that he was in the end he came to your aid after after everything. So you can you can tell he had a change of heart. Yeah. But he still did all these terrible things. But he was able to like it's not like redemption per se, but like okay. he you you came to an agreement. You know, it was like yep. it was like yep. two enemies facing each other and going like I understand. Yeah. And then, like, there's another character who later on who goes, nope, I don't regret anything I did. I would do it again. Like, and he was, Dang. you know, straight up. Even after you've yeah. been through all, you learn his backstory and everything. And he still is just like, nope, I don't like you. <laughs> Damn. And, and it's just so it's like people are people and they're going to have different reasons for what they do. Yeah. And some of them, your mind, the minds can't be changed. Right. Because right? Right. there's always the thing of like, you, you always wish. And the thing I like about Final Fantasy 14 is it is absurdly hopeful absurdly hopeful <laughs> where like you're always trying to just like i'm be like at the least better something person, is in this like, world yeah <laughs> trying to like help people be like oh it's unrealistic i'm like this is my fantasy game let me have this Literally. like please <laughs> we can have a happy ending let's i'm okay with it if it's written well you know what yeah. i mean so yeah i think that's a really cool cool way that they tackle that um but the whole thing is based around 
them having this perfect world because at one point you get to go you see glimpses of it of the world before and it was perfect and it Got was it. and it's the thing of like it was um uh do you know the book utopia um i've heard of it i've never so read it a lot yeah. of it is based on that book which okay. i then went and read because i thought that was very interesting yeah um where it was like a perfect utopia where everyone like wore the same thing and everyone was equal and everyone had all this magic and it was beautiful and like everyone just everyone lived forever until they decided they didn't want to live anymore and they went back to the star and like all all of this stuff and like <laughs> you find out that what happened to like ruin that was uh-huh. one person had depression wow and it ruined everything ruined because no one knew how to handle it so wow mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh and so because God. of that like need for perfection they were like, oh, they just dismissed him because they were like, no, why would you think this way? Which is funny because the need for perfection is almost an imperfection. Exactly. Uh, literally, though, like I, I I wrote in here. I don't even need to reference it because I just I know this concept so well within me that like I I'm not a perfectionist mm-hmm. very much on purpose. Mm-hmm. In fact, I sometimes put tiny little imperfections in my music just because. Mm hmm. Because, yeah, why, why why would I strive for perfection in an imperfect world? It'll never be that way. Right, and it only sets you up for disappointment. Yeah, mm-hmm. does it move people? Yes, great. Then I've done my job, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Half the time people don't, like, I don't think people realize that they don't need it. Like, for if you're talking in music too specifically, like, I prefer, like, a live performance because you get those tidy, tiny yes. idiosyncrasies mm-hmm. that make it unique and yes. make it, like, human, you yes. know? Like, you can tell when, when something's just computers, yeah. you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is the world of Final Fantasy 12, or sorry, 14, is it, like, what is the aesthetic like? Because, like, some Final Fantasy games are just medieval AF, and those aren't the ones that I typically like that no, much. No, 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 I like it when there's a little modernity and, like, high tech. Yes. Okay, there's is it like that? definitely that. It leans more, because you know how Final Fantasies are always either, like, so they're a mix of fantasy or sci-fi. Yep. This one is 100% a mix of that. Cool. Like, you start in, like... You have, like, fantasy clothes and stuff, but then later there's, like, tech wear, and you're fighting the Garleans, who is all Magitech. It's very, like, Shinra. It's very... Amazing. So there's... The aesthetics Good. are all over the place. Yeah. You see people in, like, techno cities. You see people in, like, the desert. You see... It's everywhere. Love there's, it. like, okay, good, good. one expansion that looks like medieval France because it's all castles and snow. <sighs> nice. And, like, you know, but then you go to, like, uh, a place that looks like India and it's got jungles and all this other stuff, like, all over the place. Those are my favorite kinds. And, like, mm-hmm. I will be real. Yeah, I will be real in the fact that Final Fantasy 16 was a bit too medieval, too medieval for me. I was like, it's super fantasy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. fantasy. And so, no, that's... God, that makes me want to play this game even more when am i gonna start free trial. <laughs> is free it trial. on ps5 um yes oh okay well fuck <laughs> and it takes a little bit of getting used to but if you've never played an mmo actually it's easier so don't even worry about it Oh, okay because some people were like oh i don't like the console controls because you use the on the keyboard on the on the pc you use like the like one through eight but i think it's very intuitive if Got you need it. help let me know because okay, it can be we'll a little do. bit of a learning curve yeah but i i'm I don't have a PC, so I would only be playing it on my PS5. And it's really good on PS5. Sweet. Like it's, and you can be on big screen. I love seeing it on big screen. Yeah, that's what's up. The cutscenes are good. Like, mm, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, free trial. (laughs) Yeah, that might that might have to be what I do. It's a good winter game. No, I was just gonna say, and like my wife works in California in the winter, so Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be here (laughs) i mean i'm gonna be visiting her and such but like i used to live out there full time with her it's not gonna be that way uh this winter so yeah um i'm gonna need something to do (laughs) i will play with you okay if you do actually yeah if you sign up let me know because i'll be like get on my server yeah 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 okay cool awesome (laughs) because then i can help you (laughs) amazing i'm gonna grab everyone into this game yeah when i'm done with uh when I'm done with Visions of Mana. Oh, Visions of Mana. Yeah. And then Persona 5, I'm going to look to play something new. So, yeah. That'll be a perfect thing. I'm also low-key playing Final Fantasy Adventure, like, on the side for Game Boy. Fantasy Adventure? Yeah, for Game Boy. Oh. It I don't is, know that one. Yeah, it's actually, um, it's called Final Fantasy Adventure, okay. but it's actually the first game in the Mana series. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Right. Um, because Mana is also Square Enix. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, exactly. From way they back in the day. They putting everything and everything. Uh, yeah, exactly. Or I think it was <laughs> just square back in the day or yeah, Enix. Right, I don't right, know whatever right, same right. shit yeah <laughs> uh yeah so it's pretty cool I really like the uh the Game Boy aesthetic of an RPG Me too. I just Me I really too. like that my first so much, like but... one of my first games I played was uh 
Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Yeah, that's and a Oracle good one. of Ages. I love those I games. I do love the top down. Yeah. It is really nice. Yeah, they are very fun. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, you said your first literal first talking point is that the entirety of the game is based on people unable to move on from losses. Now, what do you mean they cannot move on? Like, what do you think the best example in the game is? Because, like, I mean, to a certain extent, none of us really move on from loss. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always kind of with us. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, we always like feel like there's like some kind of weird piece missing. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do the characters cope in like a positive sense other than I guess what you were saying and how, you know, they speak of the characters from old? What are some other things that you can think of that they do? Hmm. In like a positive sense. Yeah. Or even negative. Right. And how do you learn from that? Right. <laughs> right. I know, honestly, it's like it felt bad to just talk about the negatives, but it's also just a very good like of what not to do. Yeah. But I mean, that's a good thing because if, if it's right. a fantasy, it's, if it's a simulation and you're learning from negative things, that's good because you can apply that to the real world. Yes. Right. So. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um. So there is like what I said before about like the main bad characters doing the whole thing of like they're destroying your world to put their world back together and as much as you try to talk to them about why like they because that because at this point because it because okay let me get my yeah so the whole thing is there's the 14 shards and when you find out about it when you find out that this has been happening they've been trying to rejoin them together you find out that they've already failed so they tried to rejoin one of the shards, and it ended up destroying it. Oh, so man. So even if they got all of them put back together, it still wouldn't be what it was. So the whole thing that they're doing is already flawed, and it's already not going to work. Got it. But they're still doing it because, like, they just have nothing else to live for, or so they think. That's a good example of not being able to move on. Yes. It's like they have already failed. Man. But they're still doing it. So... You find this out when you get into it. So, like, that's already all happened. Wow. Yeah. So that's, like, a big thing of it because then you go, why? Like, why are you still doing this then? Because, like, you literally can't get it back how it was. It's impossible at Kinda this reminds point. me of the mega movement, but that's yeah. beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, anyways. No. Right, you know, yeah. like, it's real, though. Um, and so, like, you trying to deal with that and them trying to deal with it. It's like, what do you do at that point, though? Because, like, they literally have nothing else to live for. Mm-hmm. You find a there's a point where, like, you get to kind of see, funnily enough, it was, like, through a, the near automatic, the near game, like, the phone game. They yeah, had a yeah. crossover that gave you lore for Final Fantasy XIV, which was so strange. That is really cool. It was really time. cool. Like, it, there's, there's a near raid. There's a series of near raids in Final Fantasy XIV. One of the best raids in the whole game. One of the best. It's so good. Um, wow. Anyway, I digress. But um, yeah. but the whole thing is that you find out, like, you get to see this one character kind of from his perspective of when it happened, when everything got destroyed, and you see him, like, losing his friends. You see him losing his family, his lover, like, all of this stuff. And that makes it really hard because, like, you, you understand. And yeah. I don't, there's something, oh, I don't know. I don't want to be too spoilery. There's like a really big thing. You can do this one. This one? It's okay. Okay. Yeah. I will just okay. It's so, not from the newest expansion, it's is not, it? No. Yeah, then then screw okay. it. Yeah, do okay. it. Yeah. It's um it's heavily implied throughout the game as you learn you're the warrior of light, you do all this stuff, uh hero stuff. Um, you learn that um you so the whole thing is that when things got um split into shards, so on each like shard, theoretically, there is a version of you because You've been split. You are a shard. It's like a metaverse. Yes. Yeah, okay. So there's a point where you go to one of the other shards, okay, throughout the game. There's a point where you go to one of the other shards. You meet your shard from that game. So through that, you learn that you have been split. And then through the game, you learn that you are a piece of this character, this big baddie character, heavily implied, if not your best friend, your lover, Got it. Okay. Like yeah. you can you can read it multiple ways. So okay. some people write it romantically, some people do it platonically. Yeah. That you were just best friends. But like regardless, you were extremely important to this person. And so that's making it even harder for him because like he's like both like wants to be kind to you because you're a piece of someone he knew, but then he's also very angry. Yeah. Because you're not them. You're something different. But he sees them in you. Oh man. And it's awful. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> Um, and it hurts so much. He's my favorite character. Got it. Um, <laughs> it hurts so much. But like, and so you find out that all he's been doing has he like he's like it's been for you, 
but not like the you that you are. And mm-hmm. there's this whole sense of like you having to figure out, be like, well, I'm not that person. I'm my own person. And moving on from that and his inability to do that results in you having to like, you know, you have to kill him at some point. Wow. You know, you yeah, because, you know, him. Final you Fantasy. Have, yeah, Final yeah. Fantasy. You got right, right. You got to do it. <laughs> Which just goes to show you that like in the real world, you can't help how other people react to you. You can only control your own actions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully that isn't killing somebody, but right. <laughs> metaphorically right. in Final in the Fantasy, fantasy game, yeah. it's a metaphor. <laughs> it is okay. And the metaphor sticks and it lands really well. Yeah, totally. And there's like another character in like the third expansion, just in terms of like people not being able to move on. There's um, like Big Baddie, Garly and Empire, right? Like they are taking over everything, right? Very imperialist, very like, yep. you know, um, coming in they've taken over a couple countries right you find that out it's like in the beginning of the game there's this country you know is under occupation there's a character you learn who was from that country originally and like he had come they had escaped with this guy they were friends they were like brothers in arms you know escaped that place Mm -hmm. one of them moved on he was still trying to do things to help get the country back but he was doing it in a different way okay then this character thought was right and thought he had just moved on and thought he wasn't still like going on it and like so his anger at that and his inability to move on from that made some very very awful things happen um because he ended up going like behind people's backs and doing really shady things just to try to like start a revolution on his own dang um and so you you have to deal with the consequences of that as well because you get involved obviously um so there's like a lot of different different stories that incorporate that like it's in pretty much every expansion there's a character that like there's something that they can't deal with and then it causes problems for everyone else got it yeah Yeah. man Mm -hmm. yeah that's crazy um Mm-hmm. It's, it's heavy. Yeah. It's a heavy game. It's a heavy game. It, it sounds like something so I'm going to and, love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it starts off so you're like, oh, I'm on a good adventure. We're going and having a good time. And yeah. Then, mm-hmm. and then you're like, nope. And then you're like, <laughs> like I'm a shell of a person. Yeah. You're going to have a good but time a crying good, tonight. But in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> yes. 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 Exactly. No, I can already tell I'm going to absolutely adore this game yeah. once I get around to it. Yes. I think actually years ago, my friend James told me that I had to play this game. And I, I think I had it. Back in the day, was it for PS3 back in the day too? It might have started because it was 10 years ago. Yeah, I right. don't remember when it came to console because it okay. started on it started on PC because it was an MMO. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. sure. So I don't know exactly because I honestly, I came into it late. Got it. I came into it around fourth expansion oh, in wow, 2020. Okay. Got it. Yep, yeah, yep, 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 yeah. exactly. Because yeah. it was a way for my friends and I to keep in touch yeah that was why we started playing it it's literally incredible friends from like from just here. minnesota like my in real life okay friends. yeah 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 wow because because my one friend's brother was like hey there's this game like we should play and i was like i like final fantasy sure it's free to start yeah you know and then we all started playing it so we could keep in touch with each other so we would voice chat and play together and that's then, so cool. and then i just never looked back yeah they, they've they've come <laughs> and gone but i've i've been i've been in it is so. there anybody from that original party? Yes, Julia okay. is back. Oh, so Julia yeah, left okay. for a long time. <laughs> yeah. And then came back and then I played them through. Like I made an alt character to play through the story with them. Got it. Since I'd already been through it. Sure, yeah. So that is kind of cool how you could uh you can leave and then come back. Absolutely. It's not going anywhere. And yeah. the thing I like about that, because the other thing with like World of Warcraft felt like a job. Like it felt like if you didn't log in every day, you'd miss things. Or if you didn't do this, then you were behind and you could never catch up. But like the thing I like, so uh, Naoki Yoshida is the producer of the game, and he's, yeah. like, super involved. Like, he loves he loves everything about it. He talks all the time. They do, like, live letters where they talk wow. about updates to the game. Um, they're very involved with the community. Cool. But he actively says, he's like, no, I want you to take breaks. I want you to play other games. Like, this should this should be fun. And he's a very big, because that's my thing, too. I'm like, it should never feel like a job. I love that. that. You should never feel like you have to do something. Yes. It's a video game. Right. We're just here to have fun. Literally. Like, so I, like, I never, <laughs> I've, I've had friends who have, like, lost, who have become too, like, mired deep into it where like they would yeah. actually be like yeah i don't even want to do this but i have to and i'm like no you don't it's a video yeah game. it's a video game you have a choice yeah I, i'm really glad you brought this up i do want to talk about this for a sec because there are certain games that yeah they they have felt like a job and i've made somewhat of a vow to like not continue to play those games if mm-hmm. they've ever become jobby yeah. i guess yeah the other thing too is that when i was uh pursuing the mainstream edm scene back mm-hmm. in the day mm-hmm. it did sort of become like it was a job and not a fun job at that right right and 
my pivot into VGM made producing and DJing fun again. Right. And that's why I'm having a ball. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that it's paying my bills, which is really cool. Well, and it kind of just goes to show when you actually just are true to yourself and do what you want to do, it ends up working out because you find your people. Exactly. So to hear you say that, is incredible i love that there are people making games these days that aren't just ginormous cash grabs no right like they actually give a crap about the community it's not just to enrich the executives so they can you know get their bonuses right um god that's i love that yeah the producers really listen more than any other game developer yeah like in terms of like how considering how big they are right right um, right it's it's shocking to me like they just did like for example like a good example they just did a huge so with the newest expansion they did like the first graphics update in like 10 years so it was a really big deal but it changed a lot of how characters looked right they were trying to update the graphics and there were certain things that a lot of people were like really upset about but they had like a forum thing and they were like like let us know what we need to change yeah and so people did and they did imagine that yeah it's like okay because we want you to be happy at the end of the day like they want people to come back and play the game that's so cool so and that's such a different energy from let's just release the game and patch it later because it sucks no you know this is like we tried but you aren't happy so let us know what we can do they put so much care into it like and it's just it's really nice to see so from the top down it's a good game yes that makes me want to play it even more Holy crap. I should title this podcast Legion Convinces this Me to Play what Final it Fantasy is. Like 14. When I talk about 14, because how I got my other friends to play was yeah. really because I just would not shut up about it. We worked, like, there was a group of us, we all worked together. I came in every day and I was just talking about it. Yeah. And then eventually they all started playing. God, yeah, it's going to so, happen. I'll be like, do you have a moment? Can I talk, speak to you? About yeah. <laughs> This will have to be my like <laughs> celebration of oh I finished my book yeah exactly. like there you go it's time there to just game they for have a little sales bit. all the time so you can get the game but like I said the free the free trial goes for so long that's, that's what you can up. do so much on it heck I might even stream it you should because I've been thinking about streaming gaming lately oh that's a great one to stream cool it's a great one to Sweet. stream then, yeah you yeah. can just do like the main story on it. That's awesome. what my friend did. That's what Julia did too. That's really cool. That yeah, then it would like force me to play it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and then know you can get I mean? people and then you go, hey, I'll DJ in the game. Yeah. And then you DJ in the game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. The possibilities are good. <laughs> yeah. I like this so a lot. I'm excited to see what character you make. Oh, dude. That's important to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> it's much. My favorite so. thing to see. Um, so we're sort of nearing the end yeah. of the hour, I guess. Not that we have any restrictions. We can do whatever yeah, you can we want. Cut whatever you want. Yeah. Do. But <laughs> I do want to talk about one more thing yeah. before we're done. Basically, uh, this is titled Confidence. Mm-hmm. You say becoming a tank, my personal <laughs> journey of becoming welcomed into the community. And feeling comfortable trying new things like Savage Raids, Extreme Trials, and gaining the confidence to start leading those things. I want to ask you, um, were you a leader at all in your life before this? Or was it Final Fantasy XIV that gave you the confidence to realize you could be a leader? Have you translated it to real life yet? Mm -hmm. If If not, not, that's okay. okay. Uh, You can just talk about in-game too. I even thought about it like that, but when you say it, I have to say probably yes. Awesome. um, Because... I always was like I never considered myself a leader. I was always very happy to follow because I didn't like attention on me. I'm very much yeah. a, like do not perceive me kind of person, but also I want to do things. So right. it's a it's a clash there, yeah. right? And, maybe it's um, just you're humble. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're not. I don't know. I, I <laughs> tend I, I guess humble to a fault. I yeah, would yeah. say I have that artist thing of where I'm like everything I do sucks. For no one would want though. this. Uh, yeah. What are you even doing? You know. So at the end of the day, I just do it for me because I'm like it's fine. It doesn't matter if no one wants yeah. it. Screaming into the void is like my whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it, it's hard for me to, what's like the concept of people appreciating things that I do is odd for me. Got it. Um, so yes. So in terms of like, even if I know, even if like, I'm like, I know this, I know something, I wouldn't say it, you know, like it took me a long time, like even in Final Fantasy where we would yeah. be like fighting something and there'd be a mechanic going on. And like, if a special interest can be game mechanics, it is one for me because like I love it. I love cool. the puzzle of it. I love the like the victory of overcoming it. Like when you when you beat a really hard fight, you know, because you all have to work together. And when it comes together, 
it's just a really cool thing. Yeah. Um, but I often wouldn't say anything even if I knew what the answer was because I'd be like, oh, well, someone else will say it. Like, I don't want to say it and be wrong. Like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had, uh, again, the previous experience playing WoW, the one time I tried to raid. And, like, I had a bad, angry partner at the time who told me I sucked and, like, all this stuff. And, like, you know, like, just bad. It was, like, That's high never school. Fun. It was high school. Yeah. You know, a long yeah. time still, ago. Though. But still. So, like, I had this, like, especially, like, going from an MMO going into a new one. I was like, oh, well, the, the roles are probably similar. So the whole thing is, like, in and of, there's a tank, a healer, and DPS, right? Okay. There's the three yep. roles. Yep. Mm -hmm. DPS is obviously the easiest one because you're just doing damage usually. Like you still have to do mechanics, but like that's like the default one people go to because it's easy. You don't have to worry as much. Yeah. Healer to me personally is the hardest one because like you, everyone's relying on you to survive. And <laughs> um, guess what? I'm going to pick that. Spoiler. Hey, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, good. Always... I'm a tank. So there we go. Yeah, there you go. And every time I play D&D, &D, yeah. even I'm always a healer. Yeah. Every They're time. They're very important. Yeah. It's incredibly so. like it's a very uh, stressful job. <laughs> yep. It is. But can be really <laughs> Really fun. Yes. It can be really fun. It's rewarding. Um, so and so and then tank, of course, is the one who like leads the way and takes all the damage and all of this stuff. And you have to like be aware of your surroundings when you're doing that, especially if you're doing really hard fights. There's a mm -hmm. lot of things. And sometimes if you're working with like even another tank, there's like two tanks and two healers in bigger fights. And so you have to like coordinate with those people and yeah. do all these things. And it's very like it's intense, right? <laughs> as far totally. as gaming yeah, can go. Yeah, totally. Um, and so so when I first decided to, funnily enough, the reason I started tanking was just because I wanted a sword. Because um, there was nice. a cool sword. And I was like, well, I really want that sword. So I got to be a tank. So I got to be a tank. <laughs> um, and so I started playing and I was like, okay, well, we're going to do this and it's going to be okay. And like, thankfully, like I'd played a lot of the game already. Yeah. Um, like I went through like the first three expansions as a dragoon and I was like loving it, doing a good job. And so I was like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going <laughs> to. And I was really scared. Um but I had some, I had some friends who were like, who like pushed me into doing it. And they were like, sure. just do it, just do it. And I was like, okay, okay. And I learned and I went in and I sucked sometimes and I was good sometimes. But then like the thing that really helped was I just started jumping into party finders that were like specifically practice ones. And I would be like, okay. hey, I'm new. La, 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 la. And actually the, the cool thing was like so many people were so patient with me. And like there was, for example, one fight I went into where I'd never done it as a tank before. And it was an extreme fight, which is like higher level than normal, complicated mechanics. And I did it like when it came out. So it wasn't, there weren't any like buffs to help you through it. Okay. And this other person, this other tank in the whole fight was like my cheerleader the whole time and was like, you're doing so good. You're doing so good. And they're like, now go over here. Now try this, blah, 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 blah. And they were like helping me with like what, what moves to use to make sure I was using the right ones. And like, and they were so good. And that. then we ended up beating the fight Sweet. with this person and I hadn't beat it before. So it was like, cool. We got that yeah. achievement. Like that was really cool. Yep. And then afterwards, like they were just like cheering me on and they That's were being so, so cool. nice. Yeah. And I was like, and it gave me like, it was a really big moment for me <laughs> To be like, oh, I can do this. Like, this isn't that scary. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and so then I just started doing it more and more and more. And then um, was able to do it with, like, the FC I was in. And I actually got to, like, lead some, like, savage things, which is, like, higher than extreme. Like, really hard. Okay. Um, and got to do that, like, with with a group of people who, like, they, were, they would ask me to tank suddenly. They'd be like, oh, no, you're really good at the mechanics. Like, can you tank? I would rather sure. you tank. And, like, that made me feel really good. Just kind of gave me more confidence in, like, learning those things. And then suddenly I was like, I want to do this fight, so I'm going to start the Party Finder. And I'll be the tank, and we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just been really cool and really fun. And, I don't, and I'm not scared anymore, which is nice. I love that. Because the community is so good and, like... Being a tank or being a healer, because if you're one of those, like, you're in more demand, right? So so people are thankful if you can do it well um, and mean if you can't. But no, no. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, it's just been a really nice thing. And now, like, I, I prefer tanking now over wow. anything. I've leveled all the classes in the game. and That's so cool. I love my little my little dark knight. My That's tiny amazing. Dark knight. I, I love how, like... Because I would never have seen myself tanking. Yeah, before, yeah, yeah. Ever. And I would that's never so cool. consider that how that came about because others helped you mm -hmm. and guided you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I know that I said what I said during the beginning of the podcast, right? But there's got to be some sort of extra special feeling when you do something like that in a group setting because when you defeat something or, or I guess overcome something mm -hmm. as a team, there's that camaraderie that you share Absolutely. and that community aspect, which we all need. Mm -hmm. And 
yeah. it unlocked things in you that you maybe knew were in there, but you were, I don't know, a little scared mm-hmm. to let them flourish, but yeah. they did flourish. And now you see yourself that confidently. Yeah. That's so cool. It helps me a lot. My but little you, tank makes me feel good in the real world. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, has this helped you in the real world? In, in what ways? Because, like, it helps me because, like, you talk about this, too, as perfection. So I've had that problem as well because sure. I'm an artist. I do photography yep, and stuff, yep. right? Um, so in terms of that, in terms of, like, putting myself out there with that has always been kind of a a push and shove because like I'm like oh I should share it with the world but then otherwise I'm like well no I don't need to because I'm making it for myself and also like no one cares and like blah 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 like all of that you know general artist stuff in my head um plagues us all right yep um but because of all that it's kind of helped me to see because like in the game you go in with confidence you still make mistakes but it's okay and you learn that it's okay. And you can just yep. try again. Yep. If you die, you get up and you try again. Yep. We've talked about this with video games. Like that's exactly. the whole thing. 100%. You can always try again. Yep. Um, and so that has just made me feel better. And then going into things like it's okay if you don't know everything going into this fight. Like it's okay if you mess up because there was something you missed. Like it's okay. And so yeah. that kind of helped because in terms of my art, I've never been good at putting it out there. But even just this past month, like last month, I I applied for my first market and Amazing. I got in. And then some people bought my stuff. And I was like, this is nuts. That's <laughs> so, so tight. And it was just because I was like, you know what? Like, we're just going to do this. And I didn't even have like a table set up or anything. I like threw one together real fast quick and like sent them a picture i was like sure this is what i got and they were like cool you're in and i was that's like great. that's awesome and that like made me feel really good i was like okay it doesn't have to be perfect yeah, yeah. No. i can just be me because i'm yep. not i'm so like yeah. i'm all over the place yeah <laughs> and honestly so, like, and that's okay that i feel like that's even more approachable than somebody who is perfect yeah, right scary. because that's intimidating <laughs> or it's <laughs> annoying it's one of the two right yeah. you know and so yeah no that's that's wonderful i i absolutely love that well see guys video games are great they're good for you right they're They're very good for you (laughs) and i will continue preaching that until i breathe my last breath are we gonna go home and play it right now (laughs) yeah i love that for you um amazing well hey legion thanks for joining me that was so fun and um you know yeah i am gonna title this legion convinces me to play final fantasy (laughs) 14 because you did convince me Mm -hmm. so i will see you in your (laughs) server soon (laughs) It's not going to be like next week. No, but no, no. I'll be there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna message you, and you're gonna be like, yes, yes. it's gonna come when you least Whenever expect it. Whenever you're, I'll be there. So can't wait. I'm ready. Cool. Well, <laughs> this has been the Quest Within, and we'll see you next time. This is the Quest Within. This is the quest within.